Hello and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 15 of 25 Days of Tonalism, Volume 2. The painting uh, that we're doing a study of today is called, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to, uh, it is by Frank C. Parade and it's called Summer Evening. And uh, if you remember volume uh, 25 Days of Tonalism, volume one, I think one of the first paintings we did uh, in that series was by Frank C. Peyrod. And I confess, I don't know much about this guy. I think he's not technically considered a tonalist. I think he may be considered an American Impressionist. But the fact of the matter was is that uh, people back then weren't making as uh, tight of a di distinction as um, we do now anyway um, which actually leads into a question I got on one of my uh, videos there about tonalism versus impressionism and this is a topic I've discussed in my blog so you can always go to my blog and type in the word impressionism and you'd probably get um, some of the work I've written there and I do feel a little bad that I don't really write the essays anymore it just became um, a bit too time-consuming with the uh, creating the video content and I think in the um, I mean I like to read in fact I prefer to read uh, a lot of information um, but I think there's a lot of other people that prefer to take their information in a video form or audio form these days and so if something had to give I felt that it was best for the text uh, portion of what I was doing to uh, go by the wayside and to continue doing the uh, videos especially because uh, I make a, an effort to record the videos and you have the advantage of seeing me do the painting so that's something I want to put up anyway Anyway, tonalism versus impressionism. Um, the simplest way you could probably put it is dark versus light. Tonalism, generally paintings are darker. Impressionism, generally paintings are lighter. Uh, indoors versus outdoors. Tonalism is, is, is almost always done indoors. And impressionism, for the most part, is done outdoors. When you are working in an impressionistic style indoors, um, you're still referencing that sort of daylight outdoor thing I would think that you would uh, um, really want a lot of good lights in the studio and uh, make sure you're painting a higher and a higher key uh, there's another way of putting it a high key uh, for impressionism low key for tonalism <laughs> tonalism usually doesn't go anywhere near the lightest errors areas of the uh, palette it doesn't go anywhere close to uh, the kind of white that you would get out of a tube. Um, impressionism, uh, I feel, is almost a scientific way of painting. It's a very, uh, the, the early guys worked with very few different uh, primary pigments and uh, would place them close together to create a certain vibration. And they were very adept at capturing certain types of lighting effects that you get in nature. And for this reason, I call it a more uh, a more scientific approach to painting. Tonalism, I would call a more poetic approach to painting. Um, how things actually look is always a reference. It's always something that you're you're working off of. But um, you feel free to take quite a lot of liberties with what's actually there in nature, um, all in service to creating a poetic type of statement about. Uh, well, it could be about anything. It's nature is sort of the vehicle. You're sort of using nature to convey uh, what it is you're trying to say. Whereas I feel impressionism is uh, depicts the um, depicts nature. Um, it really attempts to go after it as it really looks. Now, both tonalism and impressionism uh, generally rely on subsuming detail. So that is something they have in common. They have other things in common as well. Uh, fractured brush handling um, is a thing they may have in common. Uh, generally a fresh approach that the, uh, the masters would have considered um, unfinished 
you know. In fact, if you look at the underpaintings and sketches of a lot of masters, they'll remind you of either tonalist or impressionist artworks because uh, they're just making notes for their uh, finished painting in the studio. But the idea that this would be something that they would, um, well, maybe they did sell them, I don't really know, but something they would present in a gallery as a finished painting um, or to a... Um, you know, one of their clientele as a finished painting is it's not not really how they operated. They were into getting a certain sort of finish, and a lot of times, uh, this finish was a glass-like surface that didn't show any brushwork at all. It was just the. It was, you have to remember too that uh, I feel both tonalism and impressionism um, re are reactions to photography in different ways. There was a movement in photography called pictorialism, and uh, I recommend typing that into Google search and having a nice ride. There's some beautiful photos done in the early, mostly in the early 20th century, where these photographers were taking a very painterly approach to what they were doing. Um, of course, everything was in sepia tones or monochromatic, but um, impressionism uh, really flourishes because uh, it's so full of bright, uh, luminescent color. Uh, maybe luminescent, not the word, but iridescent, maybe a better color. Luminescent is a word I would use for tonalism, so tonalism, tonalism is luminescent. Impressionism is iridescent. Um, now, I want you to keep in mind that I am not an art historian, and everything I have to say about art history is through the subjective eyes of a working artist, so these are how I think of things and this is how I define things and uh, one thing I was getting into with a friend of mine um, last week is if you uh, and one day I will put up my um, Pinterest link to my impression uh, I don't have an impressionism page I have a tonalism page with about uh, 900 images on it now some of those are multiple uh, images of the same um, original painting but I, I will put those up because um, I think I think it's good to get a, you know different photographs of a painting will give you a different sense of the color especially since these photographs are oftentimes being taken in, in a museum by people with varying types of equipment anyway tonalism versus impressionism uh, you could say impressionism is direct and tonalism is indirect at least in its appearance. Now, um, one of the uh, most famous Impressionist painters would be Monet and his water lilies. They look like they're direct and they're painted all fresco or all at once, but the fact of the matter is, is that he would bring the paintings out to his garden at the same time each day and work on them for 15 or 20 minutes. And so that is actually indirect, but the end result looks quite direct. Now, what do I mean by direct or indirect. Direct generally means you've got your canvas. You might uh, whip some tone on there quickly with some, uh, you know, um, turpentine and uh, a little bit of color uh, maybe, or a lot of times impressionism is just done on a white canvas. Um, you basically go in and you do your painting and you try and do it uh, a la prima or all at once. And um, this is one of the reasons why impressionism has a real fresh kind of uh, snappy feeling to it. Tonalism, on the other hand, uh, you uh, do have maybe a, an initial um, what I call color pass that uh, might be very much like the a la prima session of the Impressionist. Um, but when that's dry, you'll go in and work on it some more um, and uh, do things like glazing or scumbling. Um, in my case, I work over an initial painting stage that I call a drawing or underpainting. You really don't have that as much in the impressionist or direct approach. You basically just start <clears throat> painting shapes, um, usually large masses, and then subdividing those masses. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do a painting. In fact, a great book is uh, by Richard Schmid uh, called, uh, I believe it's called Alla Prima, Everything I Know About Painting. It's not a cheap book, but uh, he's a very, very intelligent guy and, a, and an awesome painter. And he breaks down, I think, at least seven to nine different approaches that he uses, uh, both direct and indirect. Um, I like to be very direct in my indirectness, if that makes any sense. I like to try and keep things fresh and not overwork things. Um, 
I do use things like glazing and scumbling, um, but uh, I don't all, always use them. It's not automatic. I don't always automatically glaze. Um, but I believe in being indirect because I like to build up a certain surface over a period of time. I like to have my drawing uh, there. Um, a lot of times lately I haven't, I used to use do, the, do my drawing stage and let that dry. Um, it seems since I started working with the ivory black more that that doesn't tend to work out very well. Um, so I'll just do my drawing maybe in the morning. It takes me 15, 20, 25 minutes sometimes. Um, and then I come back in the afternoon and start doing my first color pass right on top of the still somewhat wet um, black paint. Either way, there is uh, stages in my mind. Um, and even if I'm just doing the drawing right before I go in and do the color pass, I always have a, a stage like that. Um, you could argue that that's still direct. I don't know. But uh, this is, these are differences that I see between the two. Um, yeah, and I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, you could go on at length, but you can see this took me, uh, I don't know, eight or nine minutes here to discuss all this. So um, that would have been a lot more work to type out uh, and reply to the uh, query on my uh, YouTube channel there. So uh, hopefully um, you tuned in and you got this information. And uh, I've said it before, it's all on my blog. I've typed it. One of the reasons I quit writing the blog was because I said uh, so many things. Um, I was just basically repeating myself. Um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people may not be aware at this point in time that there's a lot of written information on the blog because I still keep the blog going, but it basically just has the video and higher resolution images uh, than the video uh, for people to check out. And uh, that I will keep doing and have kept up. Uh, we're getting sort of close to the end here. I will probably talk about how things went in the studio tomorrow since uh, I spent most of this video talking about the tonalism versus impressionism. Um, Frank C. Parad, he's an excellent artist. I will uh, just let you get into Google. Uh, there will be an accurate spelling of his name here on the video, so if you're interested about him, look him up. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get much into him today, but uh, kind of a busy day for me anyway, I'm doing all the work around the house, so. Um, but I did want to get you uh, this video and the uh, corresponding blog post, so check it out. Now, if you like my channel, please click subscribe, uh, and that way you'll know when I've dropped another video. And I do two videos a week, and uh, it's always on my Saturday and Sunday, which is in the, um, on the other side of the dateline is actually Friday and Saturday to most of the world. Anyway, take good care, stay out of trouble. Uh, oh, my website, hey, landscapepainter.co.nz. You can go there, you can follow the blog. There's a link to follow the blog under the video as well. Um, and I will be back tomorrow. So, like I said, hopefully you're still staying out of trouble. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.